Hello everybody, it's Caden here from Kepler Electronics and welcome to something pretty different. Seeing as the Open and Worlds got cancelled, that means I am officially a Vex alumni. And don't worry, this channel isn't going anywhere. I plan on doing Vex U, so expect some content on that over the summer. But that isn't what this video is about. Today I want to go over my history as a Vex competitor, talk about my successes and my failures, and hopefully that you guys can learn from some of my mistakes. So let's start with my first year. I had just entered high school, and seeing as I had enjoyed my two years in first LEGO League, I wanted to join my school's Vex Robotics team. Now this team was still relatively new, and none of us really knew what we were doing, as evidenced by the robot that we built. This year was Starstruck, where the goal was to throw stars over a fence in the middle, and we decided to build a forklift. Now a forklift wouldn't ordinarily be a bad idea, but it was when you look at what we had designed. I don't have any pictures of this robot, so you're just going to have to use your imagination on this one. We didn't have any clue about how to build expansions, or that they were even allowed. We saw that we had to build it within an 18 inch cube, so we built a robot within an 18 inch cube. As the fence was taller than 18 inches, this meant that we couldn't actually lift the stars over the fence. I have a vague memory of us actually just assuming that the fence was 18 inches tall and not even bothering to read the rules, so... We went to one tournament and performed very poorly. As we couldn't lift cubes over the fence, we ended up just pushing them underneath it. And because that's not efficient, we ended up getting last place, or at least very close to it. And with that, our season was over. This brings us to the next year, in the zone. We still had no clue what we were doing, so we built a holonomic drivetrain, which ordinarily wouldn't be a problem, but we had no clue on how to program a holonomic drivetrain. We had this weird double stage linear slide setup, which was not a cascade lift. It was two independent linear slides where one slide would kind of go up and then another slide would come up through the center of it. And then that center slide would flop down and try and pick up cones like that. And of course, we were still not using bearing flats because you don't need bearing flats. We went to our first tournament and we did very poorly. Of course, not knowing how to program a holonomic drivetrain, our robot just kept driving in circles. We actually ended up losing the top stage of our lift at one point and just had it laying on the field completely separate from our robot. I'm pretty sure we ended up placing last, and that was very disappointing for us. So, we took apart the robot and decided we needed to build something better. We were so far behind these robots at the tournament that I figured there must be some sort of community online where people were sharing secrets, and what do you know, there was. And I discovered the Vex forum, and the Vex discord, and reveal videos, and all this stuff, and this culminated in designing a completely new robot from scratch. So over Thanksgiving break, I brought the stuff home and pulled an all-nighter and built a brand new robot from scratch. This robot had bearing flats, and it had a six bar lift, and it did still use the Vex Claw, but it actually ended up working relatively well. We took this robot to one of the biggest tournaments in our region, and we actually ended up doing pretty well. We worked our way up through eliminations, culminating in the final match, where we lost. But going from last place at our previous tournament to second place here, that was incredible. And with that, that meant that we qualified for state. But the bot we had done so well with just wouldn't cut it for states. It didn't have a mobile goal lift, it couldn't reach that high, and it used a Vex Claw. So we took the entire robot apart and again, in a frenzied weekend build session, completely redesigned the robot from scratch. We used a double reverse four bar for our lift with a Goliath roller to intake cones. We actually had a mobile goal lift this time, but it was placed in the back of our lift. And so armed with our brand new robot, we took the robot to states. This time we actually had an autonomous, which worked most of the time. States was memorable if but for one moment alone. The time we threw a mobile goal out of the raised fields. This happened during Autonomous, where we went and picked up the mobile goal, brought it back, and then our robot tipped when trying to score it and just tossed it right out of the arena. That was an incredibly memorable moment, and I still think about it quite often to this day. But as throwing mobile goals out of the field doesn't score you any points, we didn't make it to eliminations, and with that, our season was over. Now there's something that's really important to mention here. This whole experience had given me quite a lot of confidence that I could build whatever I wanted and just use the internet to troubleshoot it. And over a school break, I decided to pull the trigger on a project that I had been wanting to do for quite a while. This little guy was the first major non-competitive project that I had done in several years. I bought all the parts, I researched how to build it, I wired it, and attached everything together with foam tape. But one thing is that this robot was a nightmare to get moving. I had to dig through so many old forum posts and archaic documentation for this little board here. And after spending a lot of time trying to figure this out, I decided that I was going to make a YouTube video explaining the entire process, so that anyone who wanted to build something similar to this would have the resources and not have to dig through old forum posts and stuff to get it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the first Kepler Electronics YouTube video. Over the summer, I had the opportunity to attend a VEX camp put on by a local community college. 
This was essentially a miniature season where teams would be randomly assembled and they would have to build a robot within the week and compete against each other on the final day. My team decided to build a double flywheel and this ended up working out really well for us. We built this robot extremely quickly and we ended up doing really well in the miniature tournament, going undefeated. The bot was part of the camp and as such it was disassembled. I did really like that design though, so when we ended up getting our V5 kit about a week before our competition, I knew exactly what I wanted to build this time. We decided to build a better version of the camp bot with omni wheels for better maneuverability and a wider intake so it could intake balls more easily and flip the caps. We went to our first tournament with this robot and we placed second. Then a couple weeks later we went to our second tournament and we placed first, taking a qualification to states with us. We had a really good year and at state we even managed to pick our alliance partner before being knocked out by the runners up. We even managed to qualify to Worlds through our skills score. Before heading to Worlds, we actually went to the US Open. This was an incredible experience. I got to meet some incredible teams like 7K, and even managed to make it to Eliminations. In Eliminations, we came up against Gators, a team from a region that we had constantly been battling with in finals. We would take a tournament, then they would take a tournament, then we would take a tournament, and it would just go on and on. But we came up against them in a dramatic finale. Most of their team was graduating, so we wouldn't be competing against them in the next year and we managed to flip them in an intense final battle for the middle platform. We made it to the bowl where our intake chain was sniped and we ended up losing, but it was still an amazing and incredible experience that I won't forget. And then it was time to prepare for Worlds. Our team was divided on whether to take Old Reliable, the double flywheel, or our new experimental catapult. The catapult had both longer range and a braking system, whereas the double flywheel was more reliable and robust and we knew we could trust it. In the end, we ended up taking the catapult, which ended up being a pretty big mistake. We were plagued by strange technical bugs, like the time that our catapult had a ball jammed underneath it, and this froze our entire robot. I still have no clue what caused this. Vex support at Worlds said that it was likely due to an endless loop caused by our catapult coat, but I was never able to reproduce this by purposefully jamming a ball underneath the catapult. When you couple these technical errors with other problems such as getting flipped, we ended up with an abysmal record of 2-9. There's actually this picture of me where I'm just looking dead into the stands and just looking so disappointed at how we've been doing. But Worlds itself was an amazing experience. I must say our performance was disappointing, but Worlds itself was not. I got to meet so many crazy teams and see so many crazy robots and crazy ideas that I'd never seen before, and I would say that is where the specialness of Worlds lies. I still sometimes wonder what would have happened if we had taken the double flywheel. Would its reliability have helped us win more matches, or would its slower fire rate and less accuracy have lost us more matches? I really don't know, and I really can't ever know. In any case, they announced Tower Takeover, and we were off to the races. We basically started building our robot immediately after returning home. I somehow managed to convince everybody that going to a tournament in Hawaii would be the best idea ever, and so we were doing it. But for whatever reason, we just couldn't get a bot together that would work well. We first tried a double reverse 4 bar, which had problems with its half cut C channel just bending. We then had problems with a scissor lift because scissor lifts just kind of suck. And then we tried building a tray stacker, but that had problems with compression. So with 4 days left before the competition, I decided to build Pippin, which was designed to be a simple robot that we could count on working. I think part of the problem was that we hadn't properly given ourselves time to breathe after Worlds. The preparation for that, when coupled with stressful classes and other stuff, just meant that we were all kind of burnt out, and I don't really know if we even realized it. We did pretty poorly at the Mark Leon, but we at least got to have some fun in Hawaii. And after the Mark Leon is where the interesting stuff happened. The school came to us and basically said, hey, we're not having Vex this year. And we said, okay, cool, how about we buy some of your parts and we can make our own Vex team. The school said sure, and that's where 2770X came from. After buying the stuff, the school ended up changing their minds, but I still had the parts, and that's why the team member ended up changing between Pippin and the Wallbot. Oh boy, the Wallbot. We tried to build another double reverse 4 bar, but due to me taking 14 college credits and scheduling conflicts, that's meant that this robot just couldn't have the time put into it that it needed to be. As was beginning to be the pattern for this year, we built a last minute robot to take its place. The summer scissor lift that we had built had come with us when we purchased stuff from the school, and so we decided to hack it apart and build a wallbot out of it. We took its two mechanum drive pods and put standoff slides between it so it could expand, and then we took the scissor lift parts and put them on the side so that we could expand with sort of wings. We took this bot to a competition, and it didn't do amazing. We did well enough to pick, but we ended up getting knocked out. We came back and we built another tray stacker, except this one sucked, so let's move over it quickly. It was a complex tray, except that due to the little amount of time that I had to spend, I didn't think properly about how to make the tray flip up, so we ended up running it without the second stage of the tray most of the time. Plus we had very little compression on the rollers because of the flip out mechanism we had to build. 
and all around this robot was just terrible. But over break, I was finally done with my college classes and I could take a couple of weeks to just build a brand new robot. And so that's what I did. This is where Mary came from. It was designed to be the complete counter to the previous tray stacker that was never named because it was so terrible. The bot would be small, similar to Pippin, but it would have a geared drivetrain so we wouldn't have to worry about breaking drivetrains. The bot would have a thin tray so that it wouldn't interfere with the rollers, and the rollers themselves would be hinged to allow for better intaking of cubes. We took this bot to a lot of competitions, and we did relatively well. Not enough to win any awards besides design and judges, but relatively well. Then we took the bot to state, where we, again, did relatively well. We paired with the second place seed, and we worked our way up to finals. We almost took the first round of finals, and if we had just had one more cube, we would have taken it. But that meant that we were on to the second match of finals. I had a lot of adrenaline coming into the next round, which helped nobody. And I didn't notice that our anti-tip hadn't deployed because of our autonomous program. And because of that, our robot ended up tipping an autonomous, and we ended up losing. It was kind of disappointing, but we still did make it to finals, and it state no less. We were planning on going to the open, and we saved a lot of stickers for the open, but I guess that's off the table at this point. I guess if there's any lessons to be learned from this year, it's to simultaneously persevere, but also to give yourself breaks. State wouldn't have gone as well as it did if I hadn't persevered. But at the same time, if we had given ourselves time to rest and recover after Worlds, a lot of this probably could have been avoided. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see any of the videos that I've mentioned here, be sure to check the description, because they'll all be down there. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're staying healthy. Goodbye.